Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Poco F3's Redmi K40 and the Mi 11X. Now I sound a little excited because one of my favorite ROMs on the K20 Pro is Siberia OS. Hands down, that developer is doing a great job and now Siberia OS official is available for this device, the Mi 11X as well. I've installed it yesterday, I'm going to do a gaming review and here's the initial impressions after using it for 24 hours. But before we get into all of that, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find a link to our Telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other, so join us there. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. my name is Kalash, let's get going. All right, so what do we have here? Siberia OS vanilla official Android 11 updated on the 16th of September 2021. This is around a gigabyte. And if you have a look at the change log over here, right? That's the official page on XDA developers. It says new build is up, download link is here. Now just have a look at the changes over here. You do have your ROM side changes and you do have your device side changes as well. Now, I'll not waste a lot of time by reading through all of this. If you want, you can go to the link and read or you can pause this video over here and read. But basically, in a nutshell, there are a lot of changes. So let's talk about Siberia OS on the Mi 11X. Let's increase the brightness a little bit. So the moment you boot into this ROM, you don't really have a ton of applications. That means as you know, just like all other custom ROMs, this ROM boots very, very basic with very few applications. It has a basic camera application, nothing too fancy there, right? I have installed Gcam for this. Now, apart from this, if you see, you have all your basic camera and phone and messaging applications and the launcher over here. So if you go to home settings over here, you do have developer options and you do have some customization over here in the home settings. You don't really have a ton of customizations, but the basic things that you need to use this launcher as a daily driver, they are there. And of course, you can always use third party launchers. To the left, you have Google feed. And as you can see over here, apart from loading, it is smooth as butter. And trust me, initially, since the last, you know, eight to 10 hours, I've felt that this feels much more smoother than on the K20 Pro. For obvious reasons, this has a better chipset. It has a 120Hz refresh rate display. So those things definitely make a lot of impact. Now let's go to the about section and let's see what all information we have there. So go to about, go to the Android version, Siberia version 4.8, September security patch. The kernel is their own Siberia kernel and that's the build date. Now remember, this is official, so you should be regularly getting updates to this. Moving on, let's talk about the Siberia exclusive features over here. So you have something called as Siberia settings. And as you can see over here, you have these moving icons over here. So if you go to system, you have general tweaks in which you have volume steps, USB configuration, wake lock, blocker, charging animation, then you have sensor block per package, something that you see in a few custom ROMs. Buttons, you can go ahead and, you know, make several changes over here, including changes to the power menu. And then you have notification customization. Now, of course, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to go through each and every option. But one by one, I will show you what all customization options are available. So that if you're thinking of flashing this ROM, including you know the features and my opinions you can maybe make a decision if you want to flash it or not now moving on we have panels now under panels you do have status bar in which you have all these customizations and then you have notification customization as well and you have your navigation bar as well Moving on, you have your lock screen customization in which you have your fingerprint authentication vibration, fingerprint error vibration, transparent notification. So that's something really, really neat. Show on lock screen, that is the weather, media artwork, music visualizer. So a ton of customization there as well. Moving on, we go to gestures over here, right? You have double tap to sleep, double tap to wake. There you go. There you go. And as expected, those features are working absolutely fine. You do have your swipe to screenshot as well, which works great. And you have your long screenshot as well. So that is something pretty, pretty neat. Now, something pretty intriguing over here is the gaming mode. 
I really, really like how elaborate the gaming mode is getting day by day on these custom ROMs. You have things like dynamic mode, which means it'll automatically add games to this particular gaming mode. You have disable automatic brightness. You have show menu overlay notification Danmaco display the notification content in the form of Danmaco in game. Ah, uh, well, I've not tried this. So I don't really know. You have quick start application so you have shortcuts like you have in miui's game turbo you can also go ahead and have other applications like whatsapp and facebook over here to quickly share your screenshot and stuff no ringing answer calls automatically and disable gestures one of the most important features disable gestures remember that gaming review about pixel experience i was struggling with in which i had issues because the status bar was coming down again and again pretty decent stuff so gaming mode pretty amazing then you have ui settings now take a deep careful look at this there's a ton of customization over here endless possibilities you can just keep customizing and it feels really really great moving on because this device has an amoled display you have your always on display as you can see the weather is also there the icons are also there the battery here so you know the always on display works pretty great for me and it didn't drain a lot of my battery because of course what we have an amoled panel and moving on you have the about option now apart from this if you go to the battery section you do have thermal profiles as well and yes we will look at the benchmark numbers as well so you know you do have your customization over here for touch response touch sensitivity touch resistant area and stuff and it works really really well right now apart from this in siberia os everything else is pretty much you know they're just like any other custom rom but you have dc dimming you have increased touch responsiveness so device specific settings and you can set the refresh rate from here to 60 90 or 120 so that is something pretty pretty neat you do have your clear speaker option right so siberia settings battery thermal profiles and device specific settings a pretty customizable rom and look at the animations here smooth as butter right even gcam for that matter is working just fine for me i've not even loaded a xml yet but yes it's working as expected now all in all if you ask me how is the experience been with siberia so far it's been pretty amazing rock solid i've not had any major major issues have tried using banking applications and amazon prime hd and netflix hd content it was working fine for me so let's go ahead and have a look at the play store certification here real quick so let's go to settings device is certified so all in all this is you know since it has become official it is more like a complete rom the smoothness the sturdiness of this rom is pretty amazing i've not had any major major issues and as time passes by this will keep getting better right now moving on let's go ahead and talk about the battery life before we actually look at the benchmark numbers so if you talk about battery over here it is at 16 percent right now we were about 3 hours and 34 minutes of screen on time. The battery temperature is also displayed over here, right? Now look at the battery usage. I did play BGMI for 30 minutes there and we did have voice calls for about an hour and we charged around 18 hours back. Now remember this is the first battery cycle and it will get better with time and fast charging for me is working absolutely fine. Even though you might not get the complete 33 watts of fast charging, you're getting anywhere between 20 to 30 watts and that's decently fast. It really charges up your phone real, real quick. So all in all, battery life section, pretty decent smoothness, UI features, pretty decent, works really, really well. Now let's look at the benchmark numbers in which the first thing that we will check will be the CPU throttle test. All right, now this is the CPU throttle test. Average performance was 247,601 GIPS on par, pretty decent. CPU throttle to 93% of its max performance, right? The other run was from later when the phone was warm. Now moving on, let's talk about Geekbench. Now that's where I have a slight problem. I think it is something to do with these custom ROMs these days because you do see that on MIUI, I got 3100, 3000 multi-core, but on some other ROMs, I'm getting 1600, 1700 multi-core score. So I think it might be something to do with Geekbench because otherwise applications and everything else is running absolutely fine for me because even if you have a look at N22 benchmark over here, 600,547. Now this score is low because this device does score 640, 650, 660 and stuff like that. 
So all in all, the benchmark numbers are not very, very exciting, but this is a solid all-rounder, comes with a tons of features and it doesn't have any deal-breaking bugs. That's it, everything about the initial impressions of Siberia OS. A gaming review on this will be coming soon, so stay tuned. And we also have one episode of Truth Behind MIUI updates for each device coming up this weekend. So we have eight to nine videos coming up. Please subscribe if you've not, because we have more than 80% views coming from people who have not subscribed. Until the next one, this is Kailash, signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling, take care, goodbye.